Hello Walking Dead fans, this is Solid Dave Snake bringing you another review on the Walking Dead TV series 5 action figures by McFarlane Toys and this review is on the much anticipated deluxe box set of Daryl Dixon with his chopper and just like all the other uh, fans of this action figure line I've been looking forward to this since it's been announced and I'm sure he is not going to be lasting on the shelves for long so if uh, you're a fan of this line and want this figure I suggest picking them up as soon as you find them and there's a lot to go over on this box set so we're just gonna get right into it and I'll go over all the accessories and motorcycle first and then we'll get into the actual action figure of Daryl Dixon and go over his uh, likeness and detail and articulation and then at the end I'll show you guys how to uh, get them up there on the bike pose good and everything so let's just get right into it and take a look at his first accessory which you see right here the updated crossbow from season three of the show in the uh, episode Arrow of the Doorstep um, he gets this crossbow and has it to this point now on the show and it's real nice how he holds it with the uh, way all these figures have the updated articulation. You can pose them really nice shoulder in the weapon. And it's basically a scaled down version of the, ten, the one that came with the 10 inch Daryl Dixon. And it has the same three bolts underneath with the green fletchings. Only these are not removable. Those are uh, fixated in there, and there is one actually loaded in the crossbow already. So, real nice detail. He's got uh, that kind of green splash camo going on with it. And he has the strap, which you can fling over his shoulder. And he holds it really tight until you stretch out his hands to hold the handlebars of the motorcycle. So, must have accessory with Daryl Dixon and it will actually fit on the front of his bike. Right here there is a holder for it and you can do it this way but the crossbow will get in the way of the tires like that. So you can actually flip it and have it held on like this. And then it won't get in the way. I don't know which one's more screen accurate. But that's nice. And his next accessory is his hunting knife, which fits right here in his sheath. And, man, I'm having a hard time getting my camera to focus. See if I can get a focus in on this knife. There we go. And it's kind of just like the one that came with his first figure. He's pretty much had the same hunting knife throughout the show. So there's not too much going on with it, but a nice accessory, and it fits real nice and tight in this sheath. And he holds it a little loose. You have to kind of work with it. But another nice accessory. And now we will move on to the chopper itself. And wow, where to begin? There's so much going on with this. Um, I guess we'll kind of start with the bike's own accessories first. And it has removable saddlebags. You can take it off and fit another character on the back seat. And... There's a lot of detail going on with these saddlebags. Silver buckles and little weathering going on to with it. So that's nice. And then this bike has this nice little feature on the rear tire. There's a little black plastic base that has a peg which fits into this hole right on the bottom of the tire 
which makes it really nice for displaying this. If you have Daryl up on it riding, um, you don't have to have that kickstand down. So you can make it look like he's riding. And there's the kickstand here. You can put it up and have it look like he's actually riding it. So I thought that was a really nice feature to put on this bike. Having this uh, little stand here. So kudos to McFarland for thinking of that. That was a great idea. And as you can tell, these wheels are functional. They both rotate. And we'll kind of start from the front of the motorcycle and work our way down. Um, right off the bat, get a good view in on these tires here. Oh, Still might want to have the kickstand down at times to prevent that. But, uh, yeah, looking at the front of the motorcycle on the actual tread of the tires, I don't know how well you can make it out, but uh, there's actually a little bit of brown wash going on with uh, the tires here to make them look dirty, uh, like they've been driving. And there's nice details going on here with the uh, brakes and the brake line leading up to the actual uh, brakes on the handlebars. Of course the holder here for the crossbow. The headlight is uh, pretty nice. It's got a clear plastic cover on it. Make it look a little more authentic. And the handlebars up here are actually kind of pliable so you can work with it to get them holding them but I wouldn't uh, mess with it too too much. I wouldn't trust it too too much because it seems like there's a lot of stuff on here that would break easy. And of course it has this uh, point of articulation here that will let it turn. So that's nice. And onto the gas tank and actual engine block underneath it is just phenomenal. Um, let me just get in here on top of the gas tank and you can see with the seat how much detail was thought into this there's actually duct tape on the front part of it and it looks like stuffings coming out of the seat a lot of texture in there uh, down in the engine block we have a lot of hoses and lines coming out and they are all pliable and manageable. And down to the carburetor you got um, the shifter and a uh, kickstand. And the chain link that runs down the back tire. And if I flip it around and get another good look at the engine on this side and all the hoses coming out. And right here we have a uh, the kickstart and another uh, foot holder here and the brake underneath and you have the exhaust coming out of the engine here and actually leading down to the back there's just a lot of detail going on in this bike it looks very authentic even on the back where the license plate is you can see how it has little uh, brown brushing to it to make it look dirty So a lot of detail going on the bike, and for McFarland's first uh, outing with making a vehicle in these Walking Dead action figures, I think they did a great job. Looks pretty much exactly like the one in the show. And now on to the actual figure of Daryl Dixon. And this may very well be my most favorite Walking Dead action figure they have made. They did a lot of stuff right with this figure. It is... Uh, almost perfect. 
Um, the likeness to Norman Reedus is so much better than the first outing from the Series 1 Daryl Dixon. And I'll actually bring him out to do a little comparison. And you can just see right away how much better this new Daryl looks. From the face to body, this is just a much better version. And you can kind of see how McFarlane has come along over the years with these action figures now. So, very happy with the likeness. And from the actual head, the hair piece is actually a separate rubberized piece which actually gives it another layer of depth which I thought was really really nice to have that and it's like that everywhere you can actually fold the hair back and on the back of course he has the angel wings on his vest And all his clothing is really pliable, just like his hair. His jacket, his shirt. Skin tone is really nice. They pretty much uh, nailed that spot on, except for, if you can tell, where this extra point of articulation is on all these new figures, this new piece. The color variation is a little different. It's a little mismatched than with the hands and arms, but it's not... Not too big of a complaint for the only real complaint, uh, I can't complain. He's got the little rag here, which is uh, rubberized. I think it's just connected to that shirt. And he's got the brown uh, jeans going on with a rip at the knee, kind of like that 10-inch Daryl had. This is basically a... Uh, Smaller version of that 10-inch Daryl with uh, look-wise. Totally different sculpt-wise and articulation-wise. But with how he looks, it's pretty much the same thing. And it says that this figure comes with 25 points of articulation. But, but uh, I counted 29. And he's got a ball joint at the head, which you can get all the way around. And good range up and down. And he has a new cut here at the uh, chest, which you can actually rotate all the way around. So that's a really nice new point. And it's hidden well because part of his upper body is connected with this jacket. So the only real spot where you can tell the cut is right here. So that's still hidden real nice. And he's got the uh, waist swivel too. You can get that all the way around. So, a lot of nice articulation there. And then he's got the same standard articulation that all the figures have on the arms. He's got a ball joint and hinge at the shoulders, which gets good movement. Same thing at the elbows. Ball joint and a hinge, which you can get pretty much all the way around. He's got that new cut here at the wrists, which will rotate. And... He's got that ball joint and hinge here at the hand as well. So real nice at the arms. And here on the lower half of the body is where this figure really shines. And everything he has down here is really needed for him to ride on his motorcycle. But he has this cut that I've been asking from for these McFarlane figures, uh, Walking Dead action figures to have for a long time now, which will let him sit where you can get the leg all the way up in a sitting position and really I hope they start putting this in all the figures now I hope this is standard but we will see and he has another point here which not any future characters would really need but he his is needed for him to fit on the motorcycle and you can see the peg here for it his legs will kick outward so you really need that for the motorcycle but if they uh, continue this lower articulation with other figures. I hope they leave that out and just have that cut that you can lift the leg with. And then down below, it's pretty much the same as all the other figures. He's got the ball joint and hinge at the knees, which you can get all the same rotation out of as everyone else. 
and the same thing at the foot. He doesn't have an ankle pivot, but he has a ball joint and a hinge where you can kind of get the feet kicked up and kicked to the side on both of them. This one, you can actually get it a little more down than the other one. So, really nice articulation wise. Uh, I hope this is a new standard for McFarlane. Very, very happy with the articulation. Got to give that a 10 out of 10. And uh, now I'll show you how you use that to fit him on his bike. And got to lift those legs up a little bit. Kick him out. And then position his feet on those foot pegs down below. You can actually get this foot if positioned right to be on that peg and on the shifter at the same time and then you can use that body crunch to kind of have them sorry guys it takes a little fidgeting with here you can have that to have them leaning forward a little bit and then I'm not gonna actually wrap his hands around the handlebars because you have to stretch them out but I'll lift them up for you to give you an idea. And you got Daryl Pose riding his motorcycle. So, very, very happy with this figure. Um, gonna have to give it a big high recommend recommendation. Um, Daryl Dixon's a fan favorite. I'm sure most people are going to be wanting this. And get him while you can, because he's probably going to be going fast. That first Daryl Dixon from Series 1 was so hot. And with this having the motorcycle with it and being a much better figure, uh, I see, see this becoming very, very popular and uh, selling out fast. So, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, I know this one was kind of a long review and kind of a little tough one to do with uh, all the little intricacies on this uh, motorcycle. But thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.